for this title. And he's got to go to the middle for and get something. And, and I'll tell you, honestly, I will love it if we beat them. Love it. Thanks for joining us. This is another episode of The Warm Down brought to you by guys by Betbull. And joining me today, United legend, Norman Whiteside. Youngest, youngest, youngest. Still <laughs> youngest, youngest, youngest. Still the youngest, yeah. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm good, man. Good. Yeah, I had a, a little business, um, tri say business trip. We had a Dallas Red supporters. It's a big um, supporters club out there, isn't it? Big supporters club. Um, me and Rob went out for the weekend last weekend, so just getting over it, as you can see. But, um, <laughs> It's always difficult with the captain of England. Um, but yeah, great weekend, so we're keeping good. Happy days. Right, we face Barcelona uh, Tuesday night in the Champions League at the new Camp. Now, you missed the uh, the first leg, didn't you, in 84-85? In yeah, yeah, before the game, I went down and had a fitness test. And um, I got to be, I got to run up and down the new Camp and not play there. But uh, <laughs> I, I failed the fitness test um, um, for the first game. Um, but, the, but luckily enough, I played um, the second game at Old Trafford. So we have got a bit of a similar scenario going down uh, this weekend, obviously, or this week even, uh, with the first team in the new Camp against Messi's Barcelona. <laughs> the, eerily similar to how it went down with you guys. Obviously, we had the home leg second, but yeah. Maradona's Barcelona. That's right. We got schooled at the new Camp, and then mm -hmm. Old Trafford rode us over the line for the, uh, the second leg. Uh, talk to us about how, how it felt doing that, and does it feel more impossible to... For what the lads are about to do this week, or no, for what you guys? I don't know if we've used all our lives up from <clears throat> Paris um, a few weeks ago, but it's still feasible. You, you can't give in until it's too late. Um, yeah, it's still feasible to do. I, I would say. But that night at Old Trafford, funny enough, but the one thing I remember isn't so much the football that night. It was the atmosphere, and people it's keep talking says, about it. It's amazing that um, you know people. Say, I just said, look, it's like having goosebumps in the back of your neck and having for an, an extra half. Yeah, yeah, for an hour <laughs> and a half, yeah. And having like an extra man on the park and the roof felt like as though it was coming off at Old Trafford. And it was really one of those nights and obviously everyone remembers um, Robbo getting carried off because he scored a couple and had a good game. And, and even big Graham Hogg at the back there kept Maradona in his pocket, didn't he, that night. But yeah, great game, great atmosphere, superb atmosphere. When you go into a game like that, you're 2-0 down from the first leg and you know you've basically got to score three goals and hope that you can keep a clean sheet or you need to start thinking four or five. What sort of mentality do you have going into that? What sort of mentality do you think the lads need to have tomorrow? Well, they need to have is um, just go out. Everyone's more or less said that we're not going to do it. So just go out, give it your all, attack, 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 basically. Um, you know, and then if we, got, if we give two or three away, but, you know, so what? But... The, the main thing in your mind is to, to go, because you need to score the goals. There's no point in playing a defensive game, certainly against Barcelona. So my my thing would say, now just get out there, give it all you've got, just keep going forward. As soon as you get the ball, look up and go forward, and anything can happen. Was there any point in that game where you went, we're having this now? Was it the first goal, the second goal? You chased them down for the third as well, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. Um, and then I headed down for Frank to score the third, but we scored a couple in quick succession didn't we um, which always helps but um, yeah but harping back on about the atmosphere we sort of knew that it was there for the taking um, funny enough it, it, it was and you know Maradona's people speak about him before the game and people talk about Messi before the game but when they're on that park you've just got to treat them as opposition basically and Maradona never got a kick that night so let's hope we can keep Messi quiet and you know similar result <laughs> Was there anything tactically that he's did uh, in the build-up to that, thinking about Maradona, or did he just go really no. deal with him? Yeah, deal, deal with it at the time. Yeah, there was no, there was no set um, thing. But I mean, I said Graham Hogg marked him out of the game. He was I don't think anyway. I can't remember, but I don't think um, he was given instructions. He was just Maradona was in his patch, and he just kept close to him and um, didn't give him a kick really. How are we doing this against this Barcelona team with the current? system that we've got because we're not we're not the finished article by a long stretch are we? Oh, will probably have a few players in his mm -hmm. mind for next season there's no doubt about that um maybe three or four you know but um i would say with, with this team you know it, we've had a bit of an up and down season there's no doubt about that and then ali came in and changed the mood of the camp which we all know even walking around old trafford as you know people have got a bit of a smile on their face now whereas you know, beginning of the season, it wasn't like that at all. So they're a friendlier bunch 
if you like, friendly players um, with a smile on their faces. Um, there's some talent there. There's no doubt there's some talent there, but I think we're probably ready for uh, three or four new players in the summer. Yeah, if we don't get those. I mean, if you look back at last summer, with hindsight, we signed a third choice goalkeeper. Fred, who's actually started looking really good these last, couple, last of weeks, couple of weeks, but games, yeah. prior to that, couldn't hold a spot down. And a young 19 year old fullback, it wasn't enough really to catch City, was it, with 19 point lead on us? Oh, no, not at all. I mean, I, I would say that I, I know these, they've just, the club have given the two centre backs, Jones and um, um, Smalley, new contracts, but I still think we need a centre back. Um, and then we get Eric Bailly back. Um, I think he's a good defender. Um, there's been injuries and stuff like that. Needs to get over those. Um, and again, we need, you know, midfield and forward. I think you just need to straighten up the backbone of the team. But when I look at this team and I look at um, some of the teams <coughs> gone by, I think there's a massive lack of character in the team. Now, you've played in some teams that you could easily say, with yeah. McGrath, with Robbo, with Remy Moses, yeah. yourself. There's some character in that team. Yeah, and then How even you, even after it? that, Steve, even after that, like Keno came in, you know. So we had we. I always say to our supporters, in our day, we were lucky. We had Brian Robson um, for 13 years as captain, and he was unbelievable up and down. Then when Robbo sort of finished, Roy Keane came in. We had 12 years of Roy Keane, so we've had 25 years of the be the best two midfielders in the country. So the backbone of the team, and that's what I think the spine is, you know. Skolji was a fantastic player, don't get me wrong, but a different type of player. Robbo and Keno were dynamic, you know, Skolji was a passer. Um, so, but there isn't many of them out there, this is no, the problem. I was say, yeah. who fits those shoes today in world football at all? Is there I'm, anyone? I'm not sure, I, I couldn't name you off the top of my head. Um, those type of players are, are long gone, <laughs> I think. For the, a lot of my audience is a little bit on the younger side. What mm -hmm. made Robbo so good playing with him? He had a bit of everything. He was... Um, he, was, he didn't get enough credit for his passing. He didn't give the ball away that much. He was a good passer. He was good at um, short distance, medium distance, and long distance running. He was good at that. He could box to box. He could score goals. He could defend. He can get in the box, and he can and he can assist as well. He had a bit of everything, and that's what you need as a good all-round captain. That's what he was. And as captain material as well, because I've heard you refer to him as the captain half an hour ago. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I, I see people at the club still referring to him as the captain, yeah. which is mental. Well, <laughs> actually, some people still refer Martin Buckland as skipper. They're all <laughs> like Arthur Olmsten and. Stuart Pearson, people like that say, all right, skip to, to Martin Buchan, and he still gets that. And Robbo gets it because he was a leader. He was a leader on the park and off it, <laughs> I might say. Um, but he was a good, like, a good all-rounder, that's the best way you can put it. And he had a bit of character about him. He's a good laugh, he's good company. He, he's got an aura around him that people um, you know, look at. Um, yeah, so that's the way I would describe Robbo. Just the complete, absolute complete everything. Yeah. I, mean, I think we... We massively missed that. I think Ashley Young's the current club captain. Um, there's a lot of talk about who gets it next, but I think even though as good as De Gea is, as good as Pogba is, I don't see either of those having them qualities in them. I don't know who's, who's going to end up long-term captain, because like, like I just said a minute ago, Robbo did it for 13 years, so we knew who the captain was. Keno did it for 12 years, we knew who the captain was. Who gave orders out on the park? Them two people I've just mentioned. Um, but I don't know. I don't know what Ashley Young's qualities are as a captain. I mean, I don't know if he's good at verbals or you know directing traffic and directing the defence or whatever. I, I don't really know. Um, so I don't like to see the armband being passed around that mm. much, and I prefer it to, to know we've got a captain and um, that's who we all look up to. Is it and important in a team? I to think so. To have a leader. I, like that? I think so. I, and everyone goes back and says you you all should be leaders. You know, I should be leader. I mean, I captain the club on many occasions when Robbo was injured. Um, and people do look up to the captain, um, but I'm saying that you should be a captain yourself. So we should have 11 leaders really, but there's always one that stands out a little bit. Let's talk about your career a little bit then. So 16 years of age, is it like three days after you played in a youth cup final? Oh you, God, yeah. you get your debut for United. <laughs> 16, that's a rare, I mean, you was a big 16 year old, let's be honest. Yeah, but the, 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 funny, thing, the funny thing about um, my debut, well, I always remember, Steve, I was on 16 quid a week and I come on for 12 Game's minutes. Game's gone, absolute robbery. I come, on, I, come on, <laughs> I come on for 12 minutes and God bless him, um, Ray Wilkins um, scored a goal. We won the game 1-0 and the boys are going, what are you doing with your win bonus, Norman? Like, you know, I go, what do you mean? You know, we've got 800 quid for winning today and I'm going, 12, 12 minutes, 800 quid? <laughs> <laughs> uh, and that's what it was then. So I remember that. Um, it was on match of the day. 
mean, it was a big thrill for me, um, just at 16, to, to, to go and play for Manchester United. It was, um, you know, I, I took it in my stride, to be honest. Um, and then I was sub for the next two games. And then the last game of that season, we played Stoke, and I got my full debut at Old Trafford. Um, managed to score, we won 2-0. Um, and that was my two weeks build up to then after the World Cup. Yeah, getting called up to the World Cup within what? What was the yeah. the timeline from that from the debut? Was it April you made your debut? April, yeah. Days you don't forget. April the twenty fourth, nineteen eighty two. Oh, not far off that then. No. Yeah. So yeah, and after that, so it was two weeks in in, in well Division One as it was, and then I had a couple of weeks off, and then I got a phone call from Billy Bingham saying you're in the squad. And we're off to Brighton to do pre World Cup training. So I had a couple of weeks off in between. But you can't lose your fitness. I, mean, I was only young, so you, you, you're still reasonably fit. So went off to World Cup training. Um, and funny enough, that was down in Brighton where it made me debut. <laughs> so I, I got to know Brighton about that, that summer. And you did a, a couple of World Cups as well, didn't you? Yeah, 82 um, and then 86 in Mexico. And it's funny this here, watch here. Um, it's it, it's not extravagant or anything, but on the back of it, um, <laughs> you'll see, it says, you know, they give out 10 watches for every World Cup. And Rubble, and I do you remember Rubble scoring in 1982? England oh, against... Born in 83, me not. Oh, sorry. <laughs> 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 and they got them old, they got them old videos out. And Rubble scored the fastest goal, yeah. and you've got a, a solid goal watch. So, well, in, in Mexico, I scored the ninth fastest goal, and I've never had it off my arm since. So it's um, what a random it, thing as well. Uh, the top ten fastest yeah. goals get a watch. Oh, I yeah. suppose and I got I got the um, I got the ninth. So I don't know if it's something to be proud about, but um, <laughs> I still wear it. It's, it does good timing. So I mean, last year's World Cup was absolutely a banger, wasn't it? Everyone was terrified about there was going to be loads of violence and stuff like that. Mm. Really it didn't, enjoyed yeah. fantastic World yeah. Cup as far as they go. Yeah. Uh, when Fergie came in, um, shook up a lot of that drinking culture. Is it a bit overplayed, the, the stories of the drinking culture, or was it I, I think we just, to be honest, we, we like to drink, there's no doubt about that, but, um, but we, we managed to do, certainly I and Brian <laughs> managed to do it around about the right times. We'd do it on a Saturday night, on all day Sunday in Paddy Curran's pub, you know, um, and then, you know, we wouldn't do it 48 hours before a game, but we'd have a good go at it over the weekend, and, run it, and then you, you obviously run it all off on Monday morning, and... And that's like that's what I said. That's what Robbo was great at, because he'd just go in Monday morning, just lead the running, and you know, catch me if you can, and so you, you can't sweat it out. Him up on it because he's yeah. front of the queue yeah. when he's on, comes to the I know, but at the same time, we used to drink in parties, Brian, um, myself, and Paul, and Kevin Moore, and Big Gordon McQueen, and people like that. Um, and that particular time, we were being followed. Certainly, me and Brian and Paul were being followed by the tabloid newspapers, like hanging outside the house and following us around. Um, to see where you're drinking and all the rest of it. And that year, this is, a, I always I sum it up, that particular year, the English League played the rest of the world at Wembley. And, um, Which is this? The year was about, I think it was 87, was it? 87? Something like that. And the English League against the rest of the world. And what happened at Wembley? We beat all you, Maradona, Platini, all those boys. And we beat them 3... We, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and we beat them 3-0. Robson scored two. Whiteside scored one. McGrath got man of the match, so I keep saying Paris Guinness was bloody good. You know what I mean? <laughs> you was a you was a, a, the subject of a bit of a bid from AC Milan, and United mm. accepted it. You just said before, yeah, yeah, and you didn't. I was no, I was in. Um, I'll tell you, I, I just touched down first time I went to America, um, Orlando. Um, first time we got into the room, and you know what it's like in America. There's a red light flashing on the telephone. So I phoned down, so what's that? It says um, Mr. Um, Atkinson will be phoning you back in 60 minutes or something like that. And phoned back and said Martin Edwards had accepted it, a million and a half or something, I think it was. And, uh, and we'll give you a few quid to go. Wow. And, and um, they were going to give me, I think it was 100 grand or something to go then. Um, and, and I just said, well, I really haven't done anything yet. I mean, I scored in two semi finals and scored in two finals in the first season. What year was this then? Was this 80, 85? It's a, 80, uh, 80, 83. All right. 83, yeah. Uh, just when you were born. <laughs> 83. And yeah, so, I'd, and then I'd played about 50 games in my first season. 50, 55 games. I was still like a that. teenager then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd played 200 games before I was 21. One week, one week before I was 21. Which is mad when you consider that Marcus has played 
150 now, just turning 21, and it's an insane mm. amount of games. Yeah. 200 yeah. games, that's insane. Yeah, 200, well, it's more or less 50 games a season to yeah. when I was 17, 18, 19, and 20. But yeah, so, um, it, in those days, it, was, it wasn't rotation, or it was just like, if you were doing okay, you were in the team type of thing. And, um, and Big Ron had faith in me, and kept me in, because I, I went through one bar in the spell that, that year. I think I didn't score for, I mean, for a forward not to score in, I think it was 14 games or 15 mm. games. And Big Ron persevered. Uh, although there was a few players came in to try and replace me. I think Alan Brazil, um, Garth Crooks, Peter Beardsley, they were all coming in trying to, but they never fitted the bill. And I just kept my place and just plugged away and plugged away. And eventually I scored and scored some important goals as well. Mm, well, there's some absolute crackers, isn't there? If you want to go and check out on YouTube, go and have a look at some of the goals scored. I don't think he scored a bad goal. I think every single goal I've seen is a banger. Well, every, well yeah, not many top ends, let's put it that way, yeah. But the, the one that um, I always say about, I've only ever scored one hat trick. I was against West Ham in the FA Cup, and, and it was a right foot, left foot, and header, so it was all Perfect. three. And the three Wembley finals I scored, um, I got a right foot against Liverpool, left foot against Everton, and a header against Brighton. So I got the perfect hat trick at Wembley. So three cup final goals, right, left, header. <laughs> when did you move back from being a forward to play alongside Robbo? Um, around about just before the 85. I was sub with Arsenal, actually. And so we came off the bench? Yeah, and yeah, scored then. But Big Ron chucked me on and uh, going midfield and had a reasonable game and scored a decent goal. And, um, and then that was it. And then Ron put me in there next game, and then the next game. And, and he said, I always knew you were going to play in midfield. I said, yeah, it was just lucky. <laughs> it was a bit of luck, I think. But um, I hadn't, the, the one thing I had was no space, um, no pace uh, up front. That's why I moved back in the midfield, because I think to be a really good forward, a top forward, you need a bit of speed and pace. And I didn't have that. I was, all, I was good at bringing people into play, and you yeah, had a decent um, head on my shoulders. But um, I think you need pace to be a top player, and I didn't have that. I've just popped into my head there. We didn't finish on what I was going to say about AC Milan. What All right. What made you want to reject that move? They went on to be possibly one of the greatest club sides ever in the 80s. No, but that's what I was saying about um, I hadn't done enough. I'd only, I'd only, I'd only played, I'd scored a couple of goals at Wembley and stuff, but that's only one season. What I had in my mind, I started at 16 and what I had in the back of my mind, look, play as long as you can for Manchester United, maybe 10 years or 12 years or something like that. And then just at the, you know, maybe 27, 28, go and try a different culture, Italy, Spain, whatever. But that never materialised. Obviously, I finished early. Ray Wilkins played over in Italy as well, didn't he? Did you speak to him about it? No, I didn't speak to... Well, in fact, I didn't speak to anyone about it. I just made the decision on my own. And Literally there and then on the phone? Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I'm not, no, I'm not bothered. I'm not going. And then when I came back for pre-season, all the lads are going, are you mad? Are you mad? <laughs> all the players are going, why didn't you go? Why didn't you go? I said, well, I haven't done enough. And then, you know, just once I get a name at Old Trafford and do well, then I'll hopefully sit down and maybe take my family away or something like that. But it never materialised anyway. But I just made that decision there and then. That, um, that season where we started off like an absolute rocket under Big Ron, um, obviously it was gone the following season. Mm. Uh, didn't have the 85, and I was, we won 10. And the, yeah. And it, it fell apart because of lack of squad depth, because of injuries to key players like yourself, McGrath, Robbo, take them out of the team and it was just, the, the backups just didn't cut it. Yeah, but the, the one thing I always, har the, the one word I always harp on about, say, in the, in the, um, in the 80s, were in our team that we didn't, well, I didn't manage to win the, um, the, the Premier, or the Division One, um, was we, were, we weren't um, consistent. We were very inconsistent. We could go to Liverpool, kick lumps out of Liverpool. They were winning everything. We would go to Anfield and we'd beat them and we'd knock them down and we'd score more goals and, and we'd get the points at Anfield. And then two days later we'd come, we'd play at the bottom of the table, Norwich, and we'd lose at Old Trafford. I mean, what's the point? We are just inconsistent and we never put a run of games together to, to make it, you know, to contenders really. And that was the one thing I was a bit disappointed about. Why do you think that was? Don't know. We just didn't. We we just couldn't do it. And everyone called us like a a, a, a cup team rather than a league team because we couldn't put that run together. And I'm like, well, I think part of it is what you said. There was a lot of injuries and stuff like that. But you've still. That's why the big squads today. You've got to you've got to get over that. But but we didn't get over it, and that's why we never won the league. Do you did you have the faith that Ron would be able to do it again after putting that sort of run together? And was it a bit of shock when he decided he didn't have that in him? himself anymore what you mean the 10 on the 
Yeah, I spoke to Martin Edwards. Yeah. Um, I had him on a podcast, and it always struck me as weird that you know he finished third, third, fourth, fourth, or fourth. Never fourth, had a top four, was yeah, it? Yeah. A, uh, consistent runs in the cups. He had that run of ten games where he absolutely smashed it. And you're like, he seems on the verge of doing something, yeah. and he didn't quite get it over the line. And I said, why did you get rid of him to um, to Martin? And he said, well, he actually resigned in the summer, and I convinced him to stay on. But like, yeah, he was. Exactly. I didn't even know that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> But well, I think um, once the man's lost his faith in himself, I mean, yeah, yeah he probably maybe, can't take he, it. Yeah. yeah, maybe he thought he'd done what he could. But you guys think it. that this was the guy that was going to get you there? Because it, it seemed like everyone loves Ron Atkinson's football. Yeah, see, when you talked about characters, Ron's a character in the game and, and was and still is a character. I mean, I was at a function with him um, with the um, Nor- Norwegian supporters the other the other week and he just turned 80, big Ron. It's incredible, isn't it? 80 years old. Um, but yeah, he he was a character and, and he was a good manager. And he, he had this attitude where we're Manchester United, um, you know, he didn't really care much about the opposition. And people ask me the difference between him and Fergie. And the difference is Fergie would have a meeting to tell you when the next meeting is because he was so detailed and, you know, he had pe- he had that team watched ten times over before we played them and he knew the right back was gonna come inside after sixty four minutes and <laughs> you know, he knew detailed stuff. Big run didn't give a hoot. Where you know, let them worry about us, and um, get out there and play football. That was that was his type of attitude. Fergie doesn't last today, does he? He doesn't get seven years to win a title, uh, especially when you've gone from third, third, fourth, fourth, winning cups under Ron. I think Fergie finishes what thirteenth, then goes like second, and he's like eleventh and thirteenth again. He's gone. Is it? Yeah, yeah. Nowadays, oh, right? you wouldn't. No, no. It, it, I think owners um, and board um, directors they want success yesterday. You know what I mean? They're not going to give you. I mean, the number. Of, managerial um, jobs that come up now. It's incredible after eight months he's getting the sack. I mean, I'd love to be a manager now. The, the, the payoffs are getting... One, you you <laughs> yeah. only need one. <laughs> exactly. I'll do that job for six months. <laughs> Thanks very much. But uh, yeah, you, you don't get time to do it these days. You, people, they turn around so quick and there's so much money in the game. It's incredible. Do you think that's um, a big flaw in the modern game then, that people aren't being given the opportunity to, to build and put their own stamp? You can't turn it around in one transfer. No, but my you? my... My thing about this, Steve, and I've said it for years, and it, I, I know it won't work and it'll never go back to this, but I think every manager should have three years. You inherit a team your first season, you build a team your second season, and you get results your third season. And if you don't do that, you get the sack. But at least give them a chance. Mm. That's but the way I look at it. The last, what, 16 years at Chelsea, I think the average reign of a manager is about 10 months. Unbelievable. Yeah. And that's with Jose doing a couple of years yeah. in there as well. Yeah. So. It's insane. It's, it's lots not of payoffs, isn't it? Can you imagine what their, their bill looks like just for paying managers? <laughs> oh, dear. I, I don't think it's ever going back to the stage where no. it's like... I mean, even Samat. Samat had some um, some dry spells in, in between the successes that he had, and you just think, I don't know if he'd have been given the time in the modern game. Yeah, no, not in the modern game. No, it's definitely all chains. There's no doubt. That they'll, they'll never go back to that. Too much money in the game, though. And, and uh, you know, one point in the Premiership's worth... A million quid yeah. or something. So, you know, every point that to climb up that league, it's just all money, isn't it? Yeah. I am worried about um, how it's going to go down with Oli. Um, it's, it's the same when Giggs was getting rumoured to have the job. You think you're not going to do your reputation any enhancement unless you have a, a Busby or a Fergie level reign at the club. Like, he was already a legend. It only goes down, doesn't it? Yeah. If, if it's not a success. I, do you fear for Oli with that? Or do you think he's. Uh, He's yeah, he's, I think he's just like any other manager. To be honest, I think if it if it doesn't work out, they'll they'll, they'll get rid of him. <laughs> it's just what you know what happened to the last three or four managers. Yeah, didn't do it. Out you go. Let's yeah, try Ali. Zero sentiment. Yeah, I mm. mean, I don't know where you go after this. We tried. We tried the sensible Premier League appointment. We tried a couple of the big foreign name appointments. We tried a club legend. Now I don't know who else. And that's it. Well, I don't yeah, know who else we're running out. Yeah, I don't know what you do <laughs> hey, next. I'll do that job. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not. <laughs> uh, what do you think we need um, going into next season to catch the likes of Liverpool? Liverpool and City have been, they're, they're on a different level. They've got some good stuff, haven't they? There's no doubt about that. They've got some class players, and and you've got to give them a little bit of credit where credit's due. Um, yeah, we just need to, like I say, I hope Ollie's got his shopping list ready, and um, I hope the board, well, I'm nearly sure the board, they, they will back him. They will give him money. I don't know how much, but they will give him money to, to strengthen where Ollie thinks he should be strengthening. Probably couple of defenders, midfield and one forward maybe. Yeah, I think most of us are pretty similar on that. Is there anyone you've got your eye on you go most of? Not really. I, I, I liked um when Hadi I don't know how he says Mbappe, Mbappe, um 
when, when he, well, when he was young, he's only 19 or something, isn't he? When he, you know, last year when he was, people were up for grabs, I, I'd have gone out and got him. Well, he went for some yeah. crazy money, didn't he? Well, that's it. Is that, him, yeah, it? for, where did he go, PSG? Yeah, what is it? What was it, 160, 180 million? Was something it? Like that. Yeah, well, I mean, that's probably compete. all we're going to get, isn't it? Yeah, we're not going to compete with that, yeah. Sure. I do like Wamba Saka at Crystal Palace. thought he had an excellent game this weekend against City again. Right. Uh, I think he's one I would definitely love to see. Uh, but I just think we need... First choice players. It's still it hard, isn't it, to 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 break down eight players there, six yeah, players. So you've got to target. Like. What's Oli going to play? Is he going to? I mean, we've we probably signed Delo because we didn't get Perisic because we was looking at a player who could cross a ball for Lukaku. Yeah. Oli's bringing a style of play now where you think we're going to we we play a lot more football on the floor. We don't look to cross it no more. So is Lukaku surplus for requirements? Is Delo surplus for requirements? Because they was that style. I think it's really hard. You've got to know what style you're going to play before you can decide. Well, you have because Lukaku is a certain style of play, isn't he? He's a, the big guy that holds it up. And whereas you get Rashford down the sides, and you know, what, what are you going to play? Are you going to do it down? Are you going to get to the byline and cross it? Mm -hmm. Are you going to play the little down the side for Rashford? Don't know. You went and uh, became a physio after when you finished, didn't you? Podiatrist. Podiatrist. Yeah. So I went back to Salford and did a degree there, and then I did a, I did a physio thing as well. Um, and then I did a, I went to Manchester Uni and did a postgraduate in um, sports science. Um, and then I literally had the right to the whole 92 clubs. And, and I used to go around and screen all the 16 year old kids, um, and do a lower limb biomechanical assessment, how they walk, how they run, and, and, career, and um, fix their, or try and fix um, their, you know, their posture. You know, if some, somebody's got a leg length discrepancy or someone's got flat feet or, or whatever it was. And I did that for maybe 12 years, maybe more, 15 years. And that was good, because it kept me involved with the game. And everywhere you went, you always knew a manager. You always, yeah. I mean, Robbo was in Middlesbrough, I think. Uh, Ray Wilkins, I think he was somewhere in Chelsea. Uh, Reed, he was, um, Peter Reed, he was up at Sunderland. All these people you knew, I knew physios, managers and coaches. So wherever I went, I went on white side tours. You'd have loved it, great little tours. Like <laughs> Exeter, Torquay and Plymouth and then Sunderland and Newcastle and then Hartlepool and Darlington. And so I had my little tours mapped out all around the UK. So there was lots of pasta and red wine um, afterwards. So I'm sure there was a, a couple of late nights or two <laughs> involved. <laughs> what made you stop doing that then? Yeah, well, the PFA, did it, they, were, they were sponsoring me or paying me. Um, and then I went from seven, um, 90 clubs, 90 odd clubs, down to 75. Then I got to about 50. Then they got me down to 25. And then I just knew each year they were right, bringing. But, but I got a good, I think it was 15 years. So I, I was happy with that. Um, and then I do a lot of the after dinner circuit. I do all the corporate at Old Trafford on a match day. I did a little museum tour yesterday. That was a lovely little day and a bit of lunch. Um, just to go around the museum and tell them a few stories. and have a bit of lunch after, and that was nice, so we do that as well. And then I'd do like a few dinners for the events at Old Trafford and stuff like that, so busy enough, good. Never thought of dipping your toe in the coaching yourself? No, I did, when I finished that, I did all my badges, so I got all my fully qualified, up-to-date badges. Um, and then I did my university stuff, and I, it was either down the medical avenue or down the coaching avenue, and I chose the medical avenue, and that's why I went around the clubs and kept involved with the you know, podiatry. Um, and I didn't dip into the old coach. I mean, I've, I've had soccer schools for years and, you know, kids stuff, but I've never um, never professionally taken over. Um, the, the, the little story, go. one of the stories was um, Big Rom, was, <laughs> I think he was laying in the sunbed one time and, um, <laughs> in, in, in his office and some, someone shouted. Sunbed in his office. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, oh, I'm going off track now, but... Um, when we were running round, and then we seen the light go out, we knew he was on his way out, so we'd all uh, up there, up the <laughs> running. <laughs> but he called me in one time, and he says, right, he said, go over to the big gymnasium, you're taking training today. And I'm going, what? what? So I went over You're like, there. what, 21 or something at the time as well? No, 20, it was less, 19, 20. <laughs> so he says, you're taking training. And I'm going, what, what do you mean? He said, I want you to take training. Okay, so over it goes, so I go, can you imagine the stick I got? Right, lads, come in, I'm taking training today. I'm a kid, like, you know, yeah, so what, why it's out, you know, get out, get out of here, you know. And um, Mick Brown came in, the assistant manager, said, no, the boss wants Norman to take training. So I had, I get in twos now, come on, let's go. And I'm taking training, and we're having a bit of a laugh, and end up playing a five-a-side and stuff. 
And then the next day, um, Big Ron called me in again. And he says, you're, you're, um, you're captain tonight. So that was his thinking, go and take over the train and make sure, stomp your authority. But, and he said, you're captain tonight. That was 1920, wow. 20 maybe. Um, so that, I, I, couldn't, I couldn't work out why he just asked me to take train and, yeah, out of the blue. And obviously in his mind, he wanted me to captain the team and um, I did it the next game. What was the biggest difference then between him and Fergie? Because I seem, you speak to, like, I speak to my old man, I'm like, what was Ron like? Like, what was his tactics like? He was like, I don't think he had any. I think it was just to get out there and get after him. <laughs> yeah, that was exactly what it was. He was just like f f um, football free and he didn't really worry about the opposition. He was just like, you know, um, that's why he picked. The mo you look through his team and most of the people in his team would be footballers. You know, look at Big McGrath at the back. He could play football, you know, um, and he, he, he was a football person. No, I'm not saying Fergie wasn't, but Fergie would definitely be more technical, more detailed and stuff like that, whereas Big Ron pretty much, you know, he, he loved it himself and he, he would join in the five sides and he used to wind everybody up going, right, England against the scum, call us the scum, the rest of us. <laughs> you wouldn't get away with that today, would you? I don't think you would, no. <laughs> um, and they used to while we strike him from Scotland and me from Northern Ireland and Frank from Ireland and oh, it was funny, but um, he, he just used to love joining in, just love football. He's just football mad person. Yeah, it sounds like it was a lot of fun watching United at the yeah. time, and I can understand uh, going from that to what almost seems like a dour Scottish guy in um, in Fergie, especially those early years when there wasn't much success about, and there was uh, a lot of not quite scoring a lot of goals, as he, as he tried to put his sort of stamp on it. His stamp on it, yeah, but fair, to be fair to him, the reason probably took him a long time, because when he came, he restructured the whole club, not mm. just the first team. I mean, he's gone back into the youth level and restructured all the scouting system and... Um, so he really put a lot of work in uh, behind the scenes, Fergie, to get the club where, where he wanted it, it to go. I said, when I said, please be honest, was you, because there was the rumour you was going to bin him um, after that. A FA Cup game if we didn't. Oh, play. yeah, there's a, everyone said, goes on about that game, don't they? Forrest, yeah. yeah. I said, Was you binning him? And he goes, No. He goes, Because we could see the work going behind the scenes. And then he went, Tabloids haven't changed. Yeah. He goes, Think about what it's like now. And I was like, Do you know what? You're right. Yeah. yeah. I said, I can, yeah, you're right. Fair enough. Yeah. I said, It probably was just paper talk at the time. Although it, there was clearly some disgruntlement in the fans as well. Uh, you, you must know, over the years, Manchester United had the back pages, whatever you do. Nothing's I mean, changed. In nothing's changed. Years. I mean, I remember, um, I think it was little Remy Moses and Jasper Olsen had a bit of a fisticuffs in training. And next day I wake up and it's all over the paper and I don't know where they got it from, but you know, <laughs> somebody's rang in or done something or somebody was there or what. But Manchester United just hit the papers for whatever they do. If Brian Robson breaks wind, it's in the back of the paper, you know, it's, it's, it's unbelievable. I think that's why we've been linked with a couple of lads that just wound up on England duty. I've sort of spotted the pattern every summer, every, every Oh, time. that Real Madrid and all yeah. that. But it's, it's in every summer, isn't always it? Always linking us in. Yeah, everywhere. everywhere. Right, here, before we bounce, let's get your balls on the table. Uh, are we winning against Barcelona or is it just a bridge too far for us, do you reckon, this week? Well, one one part of me says uh, we've we've used all our lives up in Paris, um, and Juventus but, as well. Schooled at home, uh, yeah. and beat them away. But yeah, so I'm I'm an optimist, really. Um, right till it's um, until it's impossible to to not to not win it. Um, I keep saying it. They've got only takes an early goal, and the only thing that I would say, Steve, is the last ten minutes at Old Trafford, and we're taking corners, and it ends back up at our centre back. Get it in the box. You can get a penalty. You can get a, a, some, a deflection. You're not going to get a deflection in the halfway line. You get the ball in the box, man. Mike and Michael Carrick and Ollie have surely had enough experience of these sort of nights to to have that sort of impact. But we were players. doing that at the wrong time of the game. You don't do that with 10 minutes to go. No. <laughs> you get it in the box. Not when we're chasing a goal. You do yeah. it if you're up, don't you? Yeah. Well, you're keeping it then. Yeah, it's different. Yeah, exactly. Right, so are you thinking optimist and hope we can do it? Yes, but I've got two. I mean, otherwise there's no point. Yeah. yeah. I mean, oh, well, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely up for that. I'm tuning in optimistic, but I think the realist in me thinks you don't see Messi have two bad games back to back. I think, I'll, well, no, but a lot of, I think a lot of our supporters have already written us off, but, I mean, I bet there's loads out there with faith that... Well, there is. I've been on uh, been on 
Twitter and Instagram this morning and seeing all the little stories from everyone as they've all been getting the planes over and all that lot. Uh, yeah. It doesn't look like doom and gloom on those planes. No. <laughs> it looks like no, it's a good trip, that. Yeah, so uh, let's hope we can do it. Uh, yeah. Norman, thank you very oh, much for joining us, mate. Um, thanks to you guys for watching. Make sure to check out BetBone. The link is in the description. You can get up to £100 in sign-up offers. So check that out and come and follow me on there, Mr. Stephen Housen, or you can get a signed Marcus Rashford shirt just for following me. So thank you guys for watching, and we'll see you in the next one. Laters.